In this video, we are going to discuss Rolle's theorem. So Rolle's theorem imagines some function between x values a and b. So here's some function between x values a and b, where we're going to need the premise that f of a and f of b is the same height. The function at a is equal to the function at b. That is, f of a equals f of b. Then what can we say about this function? You'll notice when you look at this function, there are some places where the function is increasing. For example, if I take a point right here, the derivative at that point is positive. So I look at the tangent line, I notice my derivative is positive and Positive derivative corresponds to the function increasing. The function's getting bigger as you're near that point. Whereas if I'm at a point over here and I look at my tangent line, it's going down, the slope's negative, and my function's getting smaller. My derivative is negative and my function is decreasing. Okay, so the places where it's increasing, the places where it's decreasing, but you also have a special value right here at the top of this function. This value where your tangent line is horizontal which means your slope is zero. There's some special point here, some special point C. So if I calculate the derivative of my function at that point C, it will be exactly zero. My, my tangent line is horizontal. And, and that's what Rolle's theorem is going to say. Whenever I began with a function, such that f of a is equal to f of b, you might go up for a little bit, but then you must come back down, which means somewhere you changed maybe from being positive back to being negative, you pass through a point where your derivative is zero. Then your f prime at some point c is zero for some value of c between a and b. Why is this true? Well, you should think this is just a consequence of the intermediate value theorem. If you start off being positive, then you can't go up forever. If your function was always going up, 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 you would never get back down to the same height as when you started. So eventually you must change to be negative, but in order to change from the derivative being positive to negative, it must pass to a point where the derivative is zero. So this is just a consequence of the intermediate value theorem. Now, as stated, this isn't fully true. We could imagine a scenario where we avoid this. How might we avoid having a place where the derivative is zero? Well, here's a, a kind of a strange possibility, but one we should consider. We want to begin and end at the same height. I want my value at a and b to be the same. I want f of a to equal f of b. I want them both at the same height, whatever the height is. And, and can we have it so that you go up, 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 and you keep going up to get here. It doesn't seem like it. Ah, but here's a strange way we could do it. We go up, 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 and then the graph could have a jump in it, and it keeps going up, up, up. Notice here now, anywhere you look at the graph, the derivative is positive. Anywhere you look at it, the derivative is positive. Except for, of course, at this point, at this value, where there's a jump. Derivative doesn't exist, it's not defined. So we're able to avoid this conclusion by having a jump in the graph. Well, if we want to rule out exotic cases like that, then we're going to add a condition. We're going to say, we don't want to have any jumps. What does it mean to not have any jumps or not to have any holes in the graph? It means that our function should be continuous, continuous on the interval a, b. So no jumps, no holes, continuous. Okay, but now if you have a nice continuous graph, continuous, we should be all set. Ooh, are we all set? So here's a graph that looks a little bit like the absolute value graph. I've shifted it over, but essentially it's the absolute value. I just shifted it. I could have drawn it at the origin. Okay, something close to the absolute value. Um, if you look at this, I, I made it so my f of a is the same as f of b. Now I start with a negative derivative, end up over here with a positive derivative. You might, so you might think, ah, so then of course, here your derivative is zero. Ah, but remember, this is one of these weird examples where when you have a cusp, when you have a cusp, your derivative does not exist 
at this point, your f prime does not exist. So we want to rule this out too. You know, th these are ways you, you might avoid the conclusion that the derivative is zero. Well, maybe instead of the derivative being zero, the derivative doesn't exist. So how can we rule this out? It's continuous, it meets this first condition, but the problem here is the derivative doesn't exist at some point. So I'm also going to insist that my derivative is differentiable, that my function is differentiable, which just means my derivative exists everywhere. My function is differentiable on a, b. Okay, but if you meet those conditions, if you have a function that begins and ends at the same height, that it's continuous and differentiable, so it's a nice function, a polynomial, uh, whatever it might be, nice function, e to the x, these kinds of functions, then it'll satisfy those conditions, and you'll know there must be some place where the derivative must be zero. That is what Rolle's theorem states.